Hey everyone, today I thought it would be fun to have a go at another element on this um, chocolatier page from Rita Berman's latest book, um, Minor Riser de um, Europa. Sorry, my uh, confidence in speaking German is not brilliant. And I thought we could have a go at this little bit here. I thought it would look like fun. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more. Let's just move my book across a tad for you. There we go go okay so we've got this um lovely um pile of presents and a bow and a shopping bag and i thought it'd be fun to uh, just have a get go and have some fun with some color really so the bag with its some um, lovely dots on it i decided that i'm going to do it in a purpley color um i'm just having a look at what i have got here in my arteza um expert set because i haven't used it too much before I think I'm going to go for this purple iris color it looks really nice and uh, I should just make a start and have a chat to you while I go so for this first part of the bag I'm just going to go all over with the purple color not the handles and not the dots don't panic if you go over the lines just chill doesn't matter I know it's hard, we're all our own worst critics, we can all see our own mistakes and I try really, really hard to not um, be too self-critical in a negative way. There's always room for improvement in everything that we do. So I believe that if we can have a look at what we've done, we can have a look at where we would do it differently next time and use it as a learning experience rather than a negative experience experience it can be so tempting to just think oh ugh, I dislike that I dislike that I should have done it that kind of like the brick work here I'm not too keen on the color combo that I've used but I don't want to rub it out and redo it because I think I might spoil the paper and I don't think I'm ever going to get the color I want is a polychromos pencil color and I don't have that color so I experimented tried to find something close by and it didn't quite hit the color I wanted and I'm not going to so there's no point in me keep on trying rubbing out spoiling the paper etc what I'm going to do is work on the rest of the picture and I'm just going to hope it falls into place or that I like it better once it's done and that's I think that's the best attitude to have we all um, have um, regrets in all of our life, not just in our colouring. We need to use it as an opportunity to learn and to move on. It can be very difficult sometimes if we hold on to something for too long. When it's a colouring picture, it's probably not the end of the world, but sometimes it can be. And uh, we need to just, you know, we can't change what's happened with colouring. We can sometimes. I'm going to do this bit and I want it to be a little bit darker but I'm going to do a light layer first and then show you you know but we we can't um we can sometimes change things um in the future we can't go back and change the past so we have to think of ways to mend what we've done if we really need to or to just move on now that's my little lecture for today over with what I'm going to do is make this a little bit darker at the bottom here to start with on both sides because I think it would be darker at the bottom I'm gonna do that over there perhaps as well and now I'm thinking how is this crinkled do you see how it's like this so that means this bit is inwards I think so I think this is going to be a little bit darker in the center compared with the outside so I'm just making it a tad dark, but I'm trying to blend it in a bit because I don't want a really severe dark line. So that's that. I'm happy with that looking like that. Just need to, well, I've got a few bits. The problem, I've got this lovely brush. The problem with the Arteza is, well, it's not a problem, but they um, crumble a little bit and you get bits. So um, don't brush them with your hand ever because you, will end, you could push them into the page and make yourself a streak which is not um, attractive. So that's why I have this, well, this is why this lovely brush was on my wish list. It's just a makeup brush. It's ever so gorgeously soft. Oh, blush. Anyway, um, 
it was on my wish list so that I can um, brush. I used to blow the bits, but I don't think that necessarily sounds particularly attractive on video, for one thing. But also there's always the risk that you could, uh, you could, well, it's not very nice, but you could spit on your paper, get it a bit wet, and that might smudge what you're doing. This is amethyst purple, and I'm gonna use this to just add a few elements into the bag to give some more um, shadow. So I think along the bottom here of this part, I want it a little bit darker. Like that. Hopefully that makes a difference. Let me look in the screen. It does a little bit, doesn't it? And then I'm gonna do a little bit here as well, where I tried to make this darker. I think using this darker color just helps to um, exaggerate that, shall we say. And that side maybe yeah and then the bottom of the bag here I think just where it's nearer to the ground it might be a little bit darker I'm only going to do a really light touch here I don't want it to be too too much now the bag handle and spots I actually quite like the idea of them being white um, I think it will work. Now, because I haven't coloured in this window up here, it's a little bit difficult to know whether it will definitely work, but I'm going to leave it white for now. But I'm just going to show you a little trick with the handle. I'm going to find the lightest grey I've got, which is this smoke grey. I'm hoping it's a, not a brownie grey. I'm just going to... No, it's not. You want a... A uh, blackish grey, not a brownie grey. Hopefully, you can see. Like this is more of a brownie grey here. So this is, and I'm just going to do a little bit of shading here on this white, like that, and where they cross. And uh, I'm not going to do any on the um, spots themselves. So it just gives a little of interest and helps it look slightly more three dimensional without um, doing too much colour. Now we have these three boxes and this bow. I think I'm going to do the bow first. I think it looks really good fun. I just want to get one and do it. So I'm going to start, I'm going to do it red. I can't resist it. I think it needs to be red. So I've got a rose red here and I'm just going to go over the whole of it in a light covering of red first and it will give me an opportunity to see what's going on. See this bit's going to be darker because it's inside for example and uh, I'm going to use the darker shade of red to uh, do some shading on this after. But it's just getting some colour down and seeing what's going on where the bow is. So it goes here and turns over there um, this bit under is the box, so we need to make sure we don't get an on the box. And down here. And then I'm going to get a darker red to do some of the darker areas. And I'll come back to using that one in a minute. Um, I'm just looking at what I've got. I have a crimson red. Yeah, it's definitely, it's a bit pinky, but it's darker, so I'm going to use it. I think it will be look pretty. There we go, crimson red. And I'm going to start in here where I need it to be really dark and intense. I might have to add an even darker colour in a bit, but we'll see. And then here, look where the bow hits the knot. Can be darker there, maybe a tad there, and here, like that. I think I'm going to do that bit dark and under here, particularly along where these two meet and maybe a little bit at the bottom. Um, on this long piece I think there'd be a bit under the knot like this and then at the bottom. We actually faded the other one at the bottom but Okay, we're going to come back to that other colour in a minute. Now, under here, look, it, there would be shadow here and there, like that. Here inside, 
and inside this one. Here where it meets the knot. And here, like that. I think that'll do. And I'm going to go back to my rose red and I'm going to finish because it's all a bit messy at the minute. So what I'm going to do is go over these darker areas with the rose red and then extend them out, slowly graduating the colour towards where I think it will be light. And as you can see, because it's a different shade, and um, one's more, this is more orangey than that. I need to combine them or else it's going to look a little strange. So over the top of here, and then down, oops, towards the edge where I want it to be lighter. Over that bit, over this bit, just over the, right over the top. And here again, lighter at the top. Now this one, I think I'm going to make it a little darker at the bottom than the top. Like that. Darker here. Less pressure as we go towards the edge to lighten it up. Like that, over the top of that bit and that bit. This bit here, darker to lighter. And then this bit under here. Keeping it quite dark here, but lighter on there. And then this last piece here, lightening it towards the middle. And there we are. Let's use my brush. There we are. There's our red bow. I'm quite happy with that. I may come back to it and fiddle. It can be a bit of a fiddler. Right, gifts. I want something blue. We haven't got much blue in this picture apart from the sky. So I'm going to grab a nice blue. What have we got? Oh, that's very pretty. What's that? That's the peacock blue. And then I'm going to do the bottom box in the peacock blue. Obviously it's striped. I'm going to miss out every miss out the stripes for now and do something a little different with those. But I'm just doing a layer. Don't burnish too hard, press too hard at this stage because this isn't the um, final bit. So what I'm going to do now is think about the shadow and I think a little darker near the bottom like we did with the bag. Not hugely noticeably but just a little. And then here as well, next to where the ribbon is, be darker, and here next to the cat. Okay, that's quite straightforward. And the other stripe, you can pick, you know, what you want to do. I was thinking about silver, um, but we did a bit of grey here. I think it might not work. So I think I'll just do a darker blue, a very dark blue here. Oh, it's an indigo. I will use the indigo. And we'll, we'll go in for a darker bit at the bottom and lighter as we move up the box. There we go. Now you can see that to the right of some of these stripes I haven't quite gone right to the edge. So I'm just going to come back in with my peacock blue and just fill those in so that it's neat. Well, as neat as I get. I'm not the neatest colourist. As well you know. Now, what's missing from our pile? I think we need something orange. I know it's going to be quite bright and brash, but I think, you know, I don't think they would match. I think it would just be a nice mix. So let's see what we've got. That's rather pretty. It's just called orange. So we use that one for this box and we'll do a layer like before. So a nice layer and then we'll get a slightly darker shade to do some detailing. You could um, do it with this shade actually, I'll show you. So under the lid I think it would be darker. So I've just put a darker line in. That might be the best way to go about this because our next darkest orange is quite dark. So. Okay, so where else might it be dark? Along the side of the um, 
bow along the cat might be a bit darker at the bottom like that and maybe on the edges here and near to this there we go yeah i think we'll leave that like that now what's our top box going to be i'm thinking we could do pink it's going to clash a bit with the orange but does that really matter i think yeah i'm going to grab pink it doesn't want to come out of the tray i'm going to use the peony pink it's quite a pale pink and uh, we may and may not quite stand up for itself we'll see how it works we have got a lot of pink in the petals and flowers on the higher bit of the picture but this is a different shade that one is got is the flamingo pink it's a bit brighter than i had or deeper than i had imagined but anyway it's okay some fun experimenting with the different colours. Okay, so that's our base of pink. I'm going to do is a little bit darker here and underneath where it hits the uh, bow. Got some darker areas in here, like that. And under here, like that. Now the box has got these little loop bits on. I could leave them white, but we've got the white going on here, so I'm going to just get a deeper pink. I'm actually going to use this plum purple and just colour those in. Thinking about the fact they might be a little bit darker where they're near to the lid than the bottom, but they're quite small, so it's a little bit hard to get that sort of detail in. Oh, we've missed that bit of the box. Let's just go back to our peony pink and just fill that in. I'm just going to do a light layer and then go a little harder around where the bow is. There, let me have a quick look, see if I'm happy. I think I am. I think that'll do for um, that one. As I say, I may change my mind on the white dots once I've done these other white bits in the picture, but it's a little early to tell. So uh, I'm going to leave them white for now. So that's me. So thank you very much for watching and happy colouring. <laughs>